It's the Sephora VIB sale. I went through my whole collection and basically just pulled everything that sparked joy. So this is probably going to be quite a long video. I've had several requests to put all of my recommendations in these kinds of occasions in a shoppable page and I'm gonna be able to do that through Magic Link. So I will put a link to that down below. They're all affiliate links, obviously, but I have to let y'all know. And that way you don't even have to watch the video. You can just scroll through there and see like what gives my stamp of approval. But if you tune into the end, or maybe interspersed throughout the video actually, I'm gonna be talking about things that I recommend skipping as well, so. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm gonna start with non-makeup items. The first one being this, I have this in my hair right now. This is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. Can't recommend it enough. It says actually cleans hair and adds softness and shine. It just makes a huge difference in my routine. I have very limp, thin hair and it is both a dry shampoo and also like a texturizing spray for me. It adds volume. It actually like helps hold a style. There is a white cast, but much like any other dry shampoo, I will leave it there for a minute, let my hair soak up what it's gonna soak up, and then I'll just kind of brush the rest out and it's never really a huge deal. So I absolutely love this. This I think is my third or fourth bottle of it that I bought with my own money. Another thing that I bought full price, like an idiot, but I absolutely recommend getting a discount on it in the sale. This is the Dennis Gross LED mask. This is if you are both fighting acne, <laughs> like I am and also just like inflammation because it's got light that will actually help with like antibacterial inflammation but also it has uh, an anti-aging aspect of it so there is an amber option that is both and I feel like if you are kind of concerned about both this is a really good way to just have it passive you don't have to hold it against your face or anything like the next thing that I'm going to show you but if all you're doing is trying to like target individual acne spots I would go for the light stem for acne enormous price difference here. So this is like $435. They'll usually do like a package deal where they'll include the Dennis Gross retinol wipes and some other, you know, cool skincare with it. And if that's worth it to you, only is if it is worth it to you, is it worth it to you, you know? So uh, getting 20% off of that can be awesome. If you are VIP Rouge, I don't know if they're going to do the 15% or the 10% or whatever, like the diminishing, but um, for VIP Rouge, it's 20% off. But the light stem is $169 and you can get that 20% off on this too. And it's just obviously like a fraction of the price and it's really effective for killing bacteria underneath the skin and healing, you know, just massive zits and stuff. So this has been amazing, but I do use both kind of depending on the occasion, depending on like what I'm trying to concentrate on or whether I'm doing something with both my hands. If I'm playing my DS, <laughs> I wear this. And if I'm watching something on YouTube, I use this. <laughs> That, that is some bougie advice. That's straight up stupid, okay? Ignore me. And then I wanna talk about my deodorant real quick. So it really has been a toss up between the two, which one I'm gonna refill because they have the same active ingredient. So this is the Kosa Sport Chemistry and this is the Necessary Deodorant Gel. They're both fragrance free. They come in fragrances, but I buy the fragrance free and they both are mandelic acid based and that's an AHA that actually fights bacteria on your skin and it's the only thing that keeps me unstinky. Arrowroot and all of the other like just absorbent things don't don't do it for me. I need something that actually cancels out the bacteria and those AHAs are super effective. And I found that it keeps me from getting ingrown hairs underneath my arms. So if I use an epilator or something anywhere else on my body, I tend to get ingrown hairs. But if I use these, they kind of gently chemically exfoliate underneath my arms. And well, I don't need to wear sunscreen down there because that is categorized as one of the places the sun don't shine. So yeah, it's a really fantastic double, triple duty kind of product for me. And I didn't know until it happened which one I was going to repurchase because this is empty. <laughs> but what did I repurchase? I got the Necessaire one because it's glass and it's just kind of like a mood. I don't know why. They're the same price and this one's a little bit less product, but I just wanted the glass. I liked it. I got really, I don't know, just annoyed kind of trying to get the last little bits out of this. So I don't know, I go back and forth. They're both fantastic. They're basically identical. I love them because they're invisible and they actually work. I have a huge box here. Okay, that was the wrong thing to say. Don't take that out of context. I do have a large box of makeup though. So I'm going to start with some skincare. Get that out of the way. Herbivore Moon Fruit. This is a fantastic retinoid. It is not a retinol. It is a 1% bakuchiol and peptides. So it's going to give that same, you know, accelerated cell renewal kind of active result, but it's not as irritating. And it's also not as likely to make you sensitized to the sun. And it is technically pregnancy safe, you know, at least by the claims of bakuchiol. I'm not a doctor, but 
I love this. It's so effective, but it's so gentle. I have laid off all of my actives recently because I am fighting perioral dermatitis right now. And a lot of y'all commented in my last video, you're like, why are you putting liquid product on that with a brush? Oh my gosh, you're gonna spread it everywhere. Oh boy, were y'all right. <laughs> I am like new to this game. So what I actually did today was this is all powder foundation. Like that's why I look so kind of like trophy wife snatched right now is because it just lent itself to being so glam. By the time I got enough coverage with a powder foundation, I like I just had to go with it. So yeah, this is not my normal beat, but I just realized that like the best way to treat it is to keep it really dry. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna get on camera, might as well just use a powder. There's like no emollients on my skin at all in this area. And I've even been like using alcohol to clean this area before I put my antibiotic on at night because it's just like the best thing to do is like dry it out and let it flake off. So. If it starts drying out and flaking off in the middle of the video, that's why. <laughs> Either way, when my skin clears up and I'm back to using actives, this is just such an amazing everyday active. I love this. This is my second bottle of it. I love also the Herbivore Phoenix Facial Oil. As you can see, I've used a lot of this. It's like a renewing oil. I think that that's why it's called a Phoenix, you know, rising from the flames, rising from the ashes. <laughs> What? Anyway, it's just a really good rejuvenating oil. It's not particularly heavy, but it's a fantastic kind of like last step occlusive that I like to wear at night. And I find that it just kind of rebalances my skin and it does really like soak in and give me a, a youthful glow. This is the first of the perfumes, but not the last. The other ones are kind of buried deep. So this is Fresh Life. You can see I have the gigantic jug of it and that is because I made my way through the regular size jug of it. This is the 3.3 fluid ounce and this is still under $100 even if you don't have a discount. Such a great fragrance. It is t-shirt and jeans. It's every single day and someone is going to stop you and be like, you smell great. It's just a really easy to like, but very mature fragrance. It's not giving like, you know, candy sweet. It's not giving youth. It's giving kind of timeless and it's just really elegant. I feel like it works daytime, evening. It's a fantastic personal fragrance. It's like a really good signature scent and I always just feel like myself when I wear it. So that's why I have the gigantic one. I bought this for myself during the sale. It's so nice. If you happened to miss the Kosas friends and family where they did 20% off site wide on their website, it's a good time now. I cannot recommend this skin prep duo enough. They just came out with the Plump and Juicy Vegan Collagen Spray-On Serum and it is, it's a spray-on skincare item. I would not use this to like set your makeup with because it's so nourishing. I feel like it doesn't really melt your makeup together and like add longevity, but it's a fantastic way to just give your skin a nice glow before you start putting on your makeup and it's gonna like balance out all the textures on your face, especially if you have dry skin. And this is such a great like lip prep to go with it. So you do, you feel like you kind of surround yourself in this very lightweight moisture cocoon before you put on your makeup. And this is the Plump and Juicy Collagen Lip Boost. They came out separately, like different times. This came out with the lip liners and this just came out recently, but I have just like obviously they're both called plump and juicy and there's just something about these that's just such an intuitive way to cover my whole face and skin prep. Gives me like a Hindash moment. You know how he always just preps the heck out of his model's skin before like while he's working on the eyes the lips are like rejuvenating. That's what this gives me and it's like a really luxury experience like this is in glass. Like this is just this really lovely. It's not plumping necessarily. It's almost like an overnight treatment but you know, the longer you leave it on, the better it's going to be. So I adore these and it's a great time to get a discount on them. As far as my perioral dermatitis, I mean, yes, these kinds of products like with this active ingredient of hypochlorous acid can be had at other places at better price and things like that. I personally really like the Tower 28 one. I don't really know what's like necessarily different about it, but it seems to work for me. And this is the SOS Daily Rescue Facial Spray. I like this because it's not emollient. A lot of times when you do have eczema or irritation or inflammation or whatever on your skin, you don't want a ton of moisture because it's going to cause the bacteria to just multiply and spread. And so this is going to dry and like just leave your skin a, a normal skin texture instead of being really emollient or dewy or something. And that's why I really like it. I've actually sent it to my mom. She really likes it too. Tower 28 is just really good for people who have sensitive skin across the board. My sunscreen, this is empty. I have them like everywhere, but this is the Tula Mineral Magic uh, Probiotics and Superfoods SPF 30. This is 
a godsend, especially for people who are so sick of mineral sunscreens being so dewy. This I love because it has a really nice kind of golden glow to it. I've heard some people say that it's a little bit too golden for them. So if you're super fair, 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 then maybe not, but pretty much like my skin tone and deeper can get away with wearing this because it has this really nice kind of like neutral Mm, champagne -y gold color to it, but not shimmery. It's really, really pretty. And it does blur a little bit on the skin because obviously it's got like mineral sunscreen in it, which is essentially just like a suspension of powders. And so it does kind of behave in a perfecting way on the skin, but it doesn't disrupt how your makeup's gonna go on. It's not going to give more grip. It's not gonna give more slip. It's just going to like be an actual skin finish when it dries down. And that is what I appreciate about it, especially when I'm testing makeup. I just don't wanna be wondering whether my SPF is like causing a total, you know, totally different perception of the way something's performing. And this really like does its job and does it well, and then it gets out of the way. And that's why I keep buying it. Okay, hair's going behind the ear. <sighs> I've been trying so hard. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have this like elegant little swoop. No, no, swoop goes behind the ear. It's making me crazy. It's like tickling my face. I can't. Anyway, I told y'all I would disperse some of the anti-recommendations, some things that I would discourage you from spending your money on at the sale throughout the video, right? So this is one that I do not recommend and this is the Patrick Ta Foundation and Powder. My camera cut me off, but what I was saying is that the Patrick Ta foundation that came out, we all had really high hopes, but I think that if you look at this kind of like topographical pattern, let me turn this light down, that has been accumulated on top of this actual cream portion of it, like that's going to tell you exactly how it behaves. It's sludgy, it's sludgy. I could sit here and like wax poetic about all the ways that it wears and everything like that, but the fact is it just doesn't dry down. It's a little bit too emollient and it's just kind of like really, like it's overdone on the silicones. And so it soaks up too much of the powder. It gets oily looking even on dry skin. And my skin just doesn't really like it. I just found that it wore in like a just not pretty way, you know? And all of my other makeup kind of like, I had to be a lot more careful about how I put it on because it does, it just kind of stays a little bit too molten for me. So I just think that this is an inelegant way of accomplishing a, like a balm foundation. I would highly recommend something like the Monica Blender Blender cover instead of this. Even though they're really different, I still just think that like, it can be done so much more elegantly. A foundation that I do recommend is the Kosas. This is one that it doesn't get mentioned on my channel that often. And it's funny because I feel like Kosas has become that brand and I kind of likened them to thrive in that sense where it's like, they used to come out with stuff that was like really new and really fantastic. And then kind of setting the bar, a lot of people came up to meet them. Like a lot of brands came up to meet them, but that doesn't mean that they're not still phenomenal products. It just means that they have a lot of imitators out there. And I feel like this is the best version of this medium coverage, more than dewy than skin finish kind of foundation that came out this year. I think that the Charlotte Tilbury one is okay. I think that there are a lot of okay ones, but this is the one that I think did the best job of it. Comes in glass. It's a little more a little more affordable than some of the other ones. And I just think that Kosa's on the whole makes reliable products almost to the point of being a little bit less exciting. And there's really something to be said for that. Like they just are an extremely reliable recommendation because I'm recommending to people that I don't necessarily know in person. And so I just think that these have a higher likelihood of working for people. So like there are gonna be things that I talk about that I don't wanna recommend. And it's not because they're necessarily bad. It's just because I feel a little conflicted recommending them across the board because they find them to be finicky. This is like such an unfinicky formula. I feel like it works in like a lot of different like temperatures and climates and skin types. And you know what I mean? It's just a really good formula. And it's got a little bit of a physical SPF in it, broad spectrum SPF 25, you know, never hurts. And I just, I just think it's good, you know? It's one of those things that I wear off camera a lot, but for whatever reason, you know, it's just kind of a little less exciting. I never thought of Kosas as a brand that was going to fall into the beautifully boring category, but that they are, you know, and I love beautifully boring. Oh, oops, this is in there too. Should have just talked about them in tandem. This is a favorite across the board for the same reason. And that is because if I'm recommending to people who I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to hedge my bets and say that like, this is the one that's going to probably work for you and what you hope to accomplish out of a concealer. 
without putting you through some kind of like exhaustive questionnaire, it's going to be the Revealer Concealer from Kosas. I wear 1.5C. I have this in, this is very light, cool 120. I think that this is my, you know, best shade currently. These are just really fantastic, reliable products. And this is actually, I'm wearing the Kosas uh, concealer today, just where I don't have any irritation. And then I powdered everything on top of that. I use the Bare Minerals, actually. This is the Bare Pro. I'm not sure that I recommend this because it's literally the first time I'm wearing it, but the Bare Pro 16 Hour Skin Perfecting Powder Foundation. And this is in the wrong color. They sent me like three colors and they were all too dark. I think a lot of people think I'm darker than I am, like a lot of brands. And you can see it's just a little too yellow. And I think this is the lightest one that they sent me. And so I used it and then I lightened it up with some other stuff. So that's what I have on. The Kosas powder is in here too. Now, do I like other things better than this currently? Yes, but I kind of feel like I'm always going to come back to it, especially as my skin changes and stuff like that. It's just an extremely adaptable powder that you can use all over your face and not end up with like a super cakey look. And I've just had the most experience with it. You know, there are, like I said, there are newer recommendations. The Make one, I have the House Labs one in here too. In fact, let's just go ahead and talk about that while we're here because they're just powders, right? This one's going to be more brightening. It's so beautiful and like super finely milled and actually, you know, comes in skin tones. And it's just a really lovely whole experience. But, you know, there are probably going to be moments in my routine where like, I just don't want this much brightening and I want a little bit more coverage. And I'm gonna lean on the Kosas because it's just, it's just great. It's just right there in that happy middle of gonna give your skin something beautiful. It's just going to give your skin a beautiful finish. And it's just the one that I'm the most familiar with and feel the most confident right now, you know, recommending. And it still sparks joy. Oh, I also have my neck covered because look at this. Like, sure, I'm glad that I can look so chic, but it's very utilitarian. I'm on antibiotics for the perioral dermatitis and I got an antibiotic rash all over my neck and it itches so much. <laughs> and I wanted to wear a turtleneck because my neck doesn't match my face. <laughs> Cards on the table. Cards on the table, y'all. Moving right along, a concealer that I don't recommend. This is the Milk, what do they call this thing? Future Fluid. I have this in the shade 4N, and if I'm shade four in a concealer range, you know that it goes pretty light, but they also just have a ton of shades. And it is not mad. It's just not great. And it is super finicky. Every review that I have seen from people on this, they're just like, I don't know. I just don't know. Like, it's just not the prettiest thing that's ever happened to me. And Milk Makeup, they do put high price tags on their stuff. And it's a beautiful package. I love the package. It's so pretty. But I did see Lauren May complaining about the fact that like, as she's been using it, like, I think it was Lauren was talking about how like, so much like crud, not crud, but like, you know, uh, unused concealer is like accumulating right here. And it's kind of icky. And I just don't love the performance of it. That's all. It's just something that I would steer clear of plain and simple. And if you're looking for an $18 concealer that also has, yeah, this is definitely something that people are looking for, but it also has like an imperfect kind of package routine situation where it's like, you know, it does kind of get on the outside and the inside right there. But I honestly, I'm almost done with it because I like it so much and it's the Item Beauty Air Hug and it's only $18. This is in the shade 110 and it was my favorite for a large portion of this year. I'm gonna give you all a spoiler because this is probably gonna be skin tint of the year for me in my end of the year best of the best. And it's, oh my God. This was such an instant love and it has absolutely never disappointed me, not even once. And it is the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. It's a combination chemical and physical sunscreen. I don't really know why I knew that, but I, you know, works for me. This is everything I have in mind when I think about the perfect skin tint because it has quite a bit of coverage and not a uh, crazy shellacking or anything. And it's not like you can't thin it out, but you can build it pretty well. And it's just such a gorgeous finish on my skin. It makes my skin look like skin, like really in this beautiful kind of like glowy smoothed way. It's just absolutely lovely. I can't get enough of it. I have this in the shade 14W and like this is gonna be something that when I run out of it, I'll repurchase it. It is truly a like landmark in my routine, something to compare things to because it's like, well, it's good, but is it as good? And like so elegantly good, just like unpretentious, does its job, does something beautiful. You don't have to be any kind of makeup expert to get it to work like you do with the King Patrick Ta, that thing is just so finicky. Like this is like slap it on and go. And it will forever be something that I compare for easy and fun to use, just like gratifying, you know, from now on, so. 
huge fan. And I'm also, I should mention, a huge fan of this from Rare Beauty as well. Ah, it's so good. So this is, ugh, this is I, my kid got into it and then it's just very messy. It's not the fault of the packaging. So this is the bronzer stick. I think it's called Warm Wishes, which I'm just obsessed with the puns in her names. It's like a millennial love letter. So this is in the shade Power Boost. This is the bronzer stick. And I've complained in the past about how her like melting blushes that were in the compacts, they were all the same color for one thing. <laughs> with the exception of the apricot. That's neither here nor there. It was the fact that the silicone formula was just like too slippy, but I feel like this, they got it right. It's the perfect balm to powder hybrid texture with just the right amount of opacity that it doesn't give like coverage coverage, but it has a really like decided upon coverage level on the skin that feathers really beautifully and keeps its presence and doesn't grab and pores. It's gorgeous. It's the perfect meeting, the perfect like middle ground between a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer because I feel like you could apply this with kind of a looser brush on top of powder if you wanted to and just tap it on. You can just smear this right on your face if you're wearing cream and like, you know, blend it right in or you can use it on a, like a cream blending brush and put it on top of, of anything. So it's just an incredible little product. And I feel like, again, it's like they're really learning on the job, but they're doing a great job of it. I'm trying to go in some kind of order, but like, Y'all know me. All right, let's talk about a couple of bronzers here. I do want to mention the House Labs bronzer because it really knocked my socks off. The whole brand I feel like is kind of a little bit hit and miss, which is also like why I have a job, right? I'm very, very grateful sometimes for hit and miss kind of brands because it means that reviews really matter. But this is one of the prettiest and most innovative bronzer formulas. It's different for a reason. A lot of times things are just different for different sake. This makes sense to me. And it's because it has this powder gel kind of formula to it. It's tough to see. But like when you touch it, it feels a little bit emollient, but it's very velveteen. And look at that color. It almost doesn't even show up. And that's what I love about this. There's 12 shades in this bronzer. And so every, I don't wanna say everybody, but you're a lot more likely to be able to find something that just blows your mind. Like a color that you are excited to use. And I'm excited to use this. This is light level one, but I could probably wear like the next shade and get something warmer and like play with these. And they do go into really nuanced undertones, like very informed color theory <laughs> kind of undertones that excites me. It just excites me to be able to offer that, you know, as an option. And this has just been something that, you know, obviously, like I've gotten quite a bit of use out of already, even since I've had it. And unlike her powder, which is lovely, it's very maximal. This is just such a sleek package. I really feel like they, they did the most without doing the most, you know, very Aries there. <laughs> Ms. Gaga. This will be one of the very few ultra, ultra luxury things that I'm going to recommend today because a lot of times I feel like it's about the name as much as it is about the product, but this is very special. And this is the Gucci bronzer in the shade one. I don't know about all of the shades, but this shade in particular is so rosy. It goes on and just looks like healthy skin. It's a velveteen. It has the nice Gucci scent to it, which I actually do really like. And the compact is just luxury to the max. We got Tiffany blue, we got gold, we got this really nice lacquer kind of top. Is that what they would call this? Sort of like that, It's but yeah, it's like this super smoothed top and then this beautiful kind of like art deco gold around here. And it does come with a brush in the bottom of it, but I don't, mine's, mine's somewhere, I don't know. I don't use the little brush, but it's just so gorgeous. Of all the Gucci things that I've tried, this is probably the number one that I would recommend from them. I really think it's a remarkable bronzer. I love this, but I don't know if it's being discontinued. I think it's out of stock on the website. This is the Natasha Denona Contour Sculpting Powder. Why would they get rid of this? It's great. Maybe they're gonna repackage it or something. I hope so. I hope it sticks around because I don't even think you can get it on the website right now. I bought it at the last Sephora sale, so I'll still stick it in my links, but there's a really good chance you can't get it, but I highly recommend it if you, if you can find it. Oh, here's actually another non-beauty thing that I wanna recommend. 
So I talked about this in a video recently, and this is the Rees, this is the smaller of the two sizes, travel pump. You know, you put your product in here and it's like reusable and it's actually an airless pump, which is like not a thing <laughs> previous to this, to my knowledge. And so, you know, you put your product in there and then you push this thing up. This was invented by my friend Megan, by the way. I'm like so proud to know someone who did something this cool. So not only is this just a really great hygienic way to have your products in like a travel capacity, because a lot of times once something's in a travel container, it's like, it's just kind of like dead at that point because it's going to like rot in that container. You can't like keep it there and then pick it back up the next time you travel in a few months or whatever. Yes, we have this lovely open close situation. It's all recycled plastic, but, but one of y'all pointed out in my comments, they're like, a pump is a game changer, especially something that's going to keep and preserve my products. A game changer for inflammatory arthritis, havers. And so I sent a video, I filmed a little video on my phone for my mom because she has rheumatoid arthritis, pretty recently, you know, started having rheumatoid arthritis issues. And I was like, what do you think of this? Like, is this helpful for you? And she's like, game changer. Game changer, are you kidding me? To not have to open a stupid jar? Like, that's incredible. She goes, why wouldn't you use it for everything? Screw travel. And I was like, okay. So I like reached out to Reese and I was like, I just want y'all to know, you probably already know this, but I want you to know that like the people that have arthritis that I have made aware of this product are so, what would you say, pumped? They're pumped about it. <laughs> They're pumped about the pumps. So yeah, I just thought that that was a really cool thing to call out and I'm so grateful to y'all in my comments for, you know, lending me your point of view because it's not something that I would have necessarily known. So it's a really cool thing to, and they, and they didn't know that. They wrote back, they were like, that is so cool. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for telling us because they didn't realize that. They were just like, this is just super convenient, but it's super great too, from just like an ergonomic, like sore hands standpoint. Oh, 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 I wanted to mention this set. So this came in the mail. I just recently started getting PR from Dr. Jart. I love Dr. Jart. I love them. The Ceramidin is one of the most effective wintertime moisturizers that I have ever used. It's so awesome. And it comes in this like aluminum tube. It's very apothecary feeling, but also just like current and K-Beauty. I've always just gotten excited to interact with their packaging. And then the Syncopare Tiger Grass, there's the color correcting treatment and the Sleep Hair Intensive Mask. And if you talk to people who have redness issues, most people will say that they really enjoy this, both for the skincare aspect of it and the color correction aspect of it. And then there's also the Sheet Mask, a uh, sheet type facial mask that moisturizes and visibly re revitalizes the skin with Aquaxel and super vital complex. I have never used the sheet mask, but I've used all of these before and can absolutely like give them a full throated endorsement for what they claim to do. And this is a $119 and 60 cent value, three full size products in here for $65. I'm pretty sure the Ceramidin alone is over $40. So $65 for three full size products, that is whack. That is awesome. So yeah, they sent me this and I was just like that, you know what I mean? After watching all of Kelly Gooch's videos about like, is it really the value that they say that it is? This feels like a really good deal, especially for someone on your list, you know, like gift giving season where it's like, you don't want to, I'm, I am not that person who's enthralled by minis. Okay. I love that this is all full size and it's also just like a winter savior like whole system game changer in a box. So super grateful that they put this all in a box at this price. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and like empty this box out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. So we're going to discuss eyeshadow palettes quickly. I feel like eyeshadow palettes have become this thing where like very rightfully so, they have become more of something that people like deliberate on the decision because there are a lot of kind of more concise options that can get at the hole in your routine that you feel like you have versus buying a whole new giant palette. And so these are the ones that I would recommend considering. Pat McGrath, these are the two that I have and none of the others has ever particularly enticed me. And I say that honestly with a, a full heart. It's not like I don't like them. I love that Pat McGrath makes palettes that are so distinct that you can find your perfect palette or maybe perfect palettes in my case, because y'all know I have a few aesthetics, right? I kind of am a, like a, a light, a light shapeshifter. <laughs> and so I have this mood that is what I have on my eyes right now, which is this very just like 
glam natural like creamy beige you know just like oh this old thing but like definitely doesn't look like I woke up like this kind of vibe Divine Rose 1. Mothership 7 Divine Rose 1. This is the straight from the pan eyeshadow of choice for me because of the lavenders and then the browns and so it's like you have the option to do a bedroomized look both lavender shimmer lavender matte or bedroomized brown brown shimmer brown matte and then the celestials are few but they are remarkable and i just feel like the choices were made so well in this palette because like this these six are a very practical six pan like i could do pretty much every look with that no problem but then it's these four on the other end that i feel like are just such it's like how you upgrade your look and like there's it really just nothing that beats a pat mcgrath eyeshadow and i know that the new one is it moonlit seduction it doesn't have a lot of these like super baked special shades and it does look like a blend of the two that I already have and that's why I steered clear of it. But if you like these two, maybe go look at that one because it might be a way of kind of blending the two ideas. So these are the four kind of special shades in there. And so it's like one that looks like, you know, a beautiful, super easy to use version of like NARS Orgasm, that pink gold shift. And then the just really super foily gold, this beautiful champagne celestial, and then this like wild transparent multi-chrome. It's so cool. Like I have it kind of just on my inner corners right here and it adds this little ethereal brightness that you just like, what am I looking at? You know, it's awesome and it's so smooth. It's like this, that one especially is like incredibly finely milled and very blurring. So like you can see the texture in the pans. Maybe you can't, it's just the lighting. But like this one looks really gritty because it is, it still has emollients and sticks really well, but it is still like that kind of, you know, scratchy confetti feeling. And this is like the smoothest thing you've ever put your finger in. You're like, ooh. So yeah, it's not a cream, but it kind of feels like one. This is the Just Beyond Basics palette for me. It's the one that if I were to, like you said, like, you can only have one palette and be like, it's this one. Yeah. <laughs> You'll pray for my cold dead hands because it's just so useful, especially for my undertones and like the lightness of my skin. But I do have an alter ego, okay? And she's a little bit, she's a little bit spacey. And that is Hutopian Dream. Woof. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And this was another one where I just like saw it and instantly was like, add to cart. You know what I mean? Add to cart. Like this is just one of those ones that just excited me so much. So the shade that I cannot stop using out of this palette, and I do feel like there are some kind of dupes between them, which is why I said the new one is something, the Moonless Seduction, is that what it's called? Might be a good option. But as far as just the extreme nature of these textures, Utopian Dream is just really hard to beat. So first of all, I cannot, cannot stop using that oil slick shade. It's so ridiculous. Ugh. Like you put that on your eyes and you're like, no, 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 I wanna take it off and do it again. I do it again and do it again because like just nothing else behaves like that. I don't know what she puts in her shadows, but it's, it's like my favorite formula. And like, you know, there are other exciting things in this end of the palette, but uh, I think that, you know, when you look at Hutopian Dream, you're looking at the special shades in here and they're like more special than any, they're the most special. They're like the, oh my gosh, the intergalactic royalty of special shades. Mainly that shifty pink and that shifty purple, right? The gold is gorgeous too. And man, when you layer these or mix them together, like game, game over. These are the kinds of shades where when I see someone wearing them, I know exactly what it is because nothing else looks like it. I see, you know, some people who have followed me for a while and stuff and I'll like follow them back, be on their stories or something. And I'm like, well, they're wearing Utopian Dream. Like I recognize those shades right off the bat because n just nothing looks like that. And when you stick your finger in that, you just want to put it everywhere. It's the star of the show instantly. So yeah, this either is your vibe or it is not your vibe, but it is so my vibe sometimes, you know, that having this at my disposal just thrills me. I love that I have this palette. It makes me so happy. It's just a very fun, super, super fun palette to have. All right, couple more eyeshadow palettes here. This is 
This spoken with some reservations. I definitely recommend going and watching that last video that I did to make sure that this is even like for you because there are caveats in terms of like the textures of this and how fragile they are. But if you handle them properly, I believe that the looks you can get out of this are absolutely exquisite. And that is the Rose Metals palette, the new one from Anastasia. It's just really different. It's very, very different. And something that really seemed to resonate with the people that did watch that video was when I said, okay, yes, this is kind of scrambled and disparate looking but what it really is is it is three quads a purple quad a green quad and like a warm brown gold quad and when you look at it that way, it's actually really intuitive and it's such a beautiful color story. I love this. Okay, probably bleh, like my most used palette and in an unexpected capacity. Like I, di I didn't think that this would be something that would be so appealing to me but this is the Desert Sunset palette from Aether and like these colors, again, it's almost hard to like trace your steps through this because of the way that she sets the, the palettes up in like the different shapes and everything. But what it really is, is that you have this really gorgeous kind of like neutrals, warm neutrals palette out here, except that like some of these actually are like very funky in their undertone. Like you get a little bit of like green khaki in some of them, but also the interior here is like all of your toppers and your, <laughs> your toppers and your popper. So uh, yeah, this is like a really fantastic pop of color. And these are all in this like, you know, zero waste packaging and everything. And the formulas are all ethically sourced, no uh, child labor mica or anything like that. Like every possible measure has been taken for responsible production and sales and everything like that, shipping and everything for Aether. And that is why they continue to be one of my favorite brands. And because they were the first and really only brand that I used during Clean Routine 2019, where I was using only Clean Beauty, that I was not sacrificing performance for a clean formula. These shades are just very, very user-friendly. Like they just look fantastic on skin. And the toppers all kind of lend themselves, they all have these kind of like bridge colors, like the shifts on them bridge between the other shades. So like one will go like pink gold and one will go kind of like orange gold and one will go kind of purple orange. And it's a way of making these shades that can kind of look a little bit disparate marry together by just kind of, you know, getting this really soft blend. And then the, if you just, if you really like want to be like basic and make it really easy for yourself, sticking to the outside shades here, these are just some of the most gorgeous, like skin native kind of olivey golds. They're gorgeous. They're so beautiful. And I love this palette. And I think she even lowered the prices on these. I think that they're only like 20 bucks or something. <laughs> and this is the Citrine palette, she does discontinue these. So when the quads are gone, they're gone in a lot of cases. And so Citrine has been the one, not only that I think that I've used the most, but it's also the one that I have gotten y'all's positive feedback the most about. The people have spoken, okay? The Fjords have spoken and they have said that this is a really good buy. It's a very good quad that's super useful and gets the job done. You know, it's just a very fun thing to use. It's easy to use. It's great on a lot of skin tones and it's just flattering. Like it's a very flattering set of shades that you can get a lot of different looks out of with very, very little effort. So yeah, I mean, don't be intimidated by the word citrine. It's not crazy orange. If you're really pale olive, I would steer clear of this just because, I mean, if you're conscious, of, if you're like self-conscious about things going super duper orange on you, but if you're complected like me or deeper or anything like that, like it's, I mean, you can look at that and see how those go together. It, it's just very, very intuitive. <gasps> oh my God. I can't believe how torrid this love affair has been, but like, <laughs> I do not recommend that you own as many of these as I do, but these beauty bentos from Kaja, like I know that there were people just sitting around being like, yeah, but when, she's, when is she gonna start talking about the Kaja beauty bentos? Because these trios are awesome. They're so awesome, okay? And it's not just because there are so many options and it's like, oh, it's like, I, I used to think Kaja was this very like gimmicky kind of throwaway sort of thing because it was like tricking you almost into buying something because it looked cool, which is like, the essence of a gimmick, right? Being tricked into buying something because of the way that it looks. But what uh, I was overlooking and underestimating was just how outstanding 
outstanding their performance on all their formulas are. Just ridiculous. So good, so underrated in my opinion. And they have ones that are like, you know, neutral moment is all matte. So there's, so there's that, you know, that's a really great, I know a lot of y'all just took comfort in that. There were like people in my comments that were like, ooh, 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 I want, oh, that's so nice. I'm, I don't like sparkle. I just want things that are just, you know, nice and, nice and neutral. Just, you don't have to buy a whole palette. You can just get this cute, concise little thing for $26 and then get 20% off of it. That's fantastic. And then there are people like me who like, I cannot stop using Orange Blossom. Orange Blossom is my, is my favorite. And you know, it's because I don't mind kind of getting my basics from my bronzer and my contour and my face powder from traveling or something. And this gives me three options for incredible like focal points of my eye looks. They're like, it's kind of hard to decide, but I do. I mean, you can tell I end up using the brown one the most. It's, you know, m I always say it's my favorite shadow in my entire collection is that particular brown right there. It's just so darn useful. And so these are <laughs> those three shades in there and they're just really, really pleasant to use. They work exactly as well on your lids as they do when you swatch them. They pick up on a brush really well. They stay put, they don't fall out a whole lot. They've got a really nice amount of kind of like bouncy, they actually call them bouncy, they call them bouncy shadow formulas. It doesn't say it on this package, but it says it online. And you can kind of feel that there's just like a touch of emollients to them that helps them really stick. So if you are looking at these and you're like, yes, that is the size of makeup that I'm looking to buy right now, it's really just about looking at the different colorways and the different textures. So it's like I said, Orange Blossom is going to be all shimmers. Rose Water is also all shimmers. Peach Madeline is two shimmers and a matte. That's the word I was like, I was like powder. <laughs> it's two shimmers and a matte. And Mauve Bouquet is also that same matte shimmer and then like that same wild topper. Chocolate Dahlia is going to have two mattes and one shimmer topper and it is one of the most useful ones, honestly. It's just, it's straightforward, it's neutral and the topper is, it's like a champagne that leans just this much taupe and I feel like it's just gonna work for a lot of people. It's like the one where you're like, I don't know, this is the one, you know? <laughs> If you're looking at it, you're like, I know that this is something that's gonna work for me, but I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna make a decision, like this is the one. It's just very, very easy to use. It's super straightforward. My mother loves this. Glowing Guava is also only one shimmer, and then you end up with a like blush tone almost, kind of a rusty blush, and then this beautiful like mauve tone here, but it's like got a lot more red in it than like mauve bouquet, and that's going to lend itself better to people who have like olive undertones because they're gonna counterbalance that red and you're gonna be able to get a nice neutrality out of it. Spiked Ginger is also one shimmer and two mattes. I love this one. It's just a little warmer, a little warmer than Chocolate Dahlia. And it doesn't have like a super, super light shade in it. So it's going to be better probably for like medium skin tones. That's a light shade, but it might not be, if you see it in the pan there, it might not be light enough to be light on everybody kind of thing. It might not work as a highlight on like the fairest skin tones. It's going to be kind of like a, you know, a crease shade or something. So bear that in mind, but the shimmer on it is just a really nice, pure, muted down rose color. And then the remaining ones, these are just the ones that I have. There are other ones, but they sent, I bought a bunch of them and then they've sent me their best sellers. So the other ones that I have are a neutral moment and velvet dream. And these are all matte. I'm going to reapply my lip gloss because it's a mess. We're going to go with this one because it's not going to give me the white ring of death. It's going to give me an opportunity to talk about it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this is, oh, the best. This is the West Atelier Nana liquid lip balm. It's just the prettiest freaking color, you know? And I love the formula, but like, it's actually really long wearing and it's very nourishing, like great for winter, but my word, what a great desaturated beige, right? Highly recommend, comes in glass, totally gorgeous. I cannot dupe that shade. Much like most things from Westman Atelier, I'm like, oh, that shade though, it's so good. <laughs> Now I will talk about a few things that I think I can dupe in this because, you know, we can come close with a few things that you can save money on that you don't necessarily have to buy from Westman Atelier, but like understand that like they're derivative because I do think that Westman Atelier is a fantastic thing to save your money on in this sale. So yeah, let's talk about the things, the two things in here that I have that I feel like are more affordable dupes for Westman Atelier products. The first would be Mimi in their blush because you can't get it at Sephora. It is a Westman Atelier site exclusive, but the, 
Anastasia, that's the brush end. The Anastasia Latte blush stick is extraordinarily similar. Not quite the same formula, but it's a little bit creamier, a little bit like, I wouldn't even say dewier, but the West Montelia wood is quite satin on the skin. And this one isn't quite a satin, but that might also be something you prefer. And it's still got that beautiful desaturated kind of like, you know, pale, 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 beigey pink to it. So highly recommend and it's $30, which is kind of a lot, but it's, I think it's $30, but it's a lot less than the Western Atelier one. And then if you are looking at Biscuit, which I actually have right here from Westman Atelier in their face trace contour stick, which I do love it, but to me, it's not really a contour. It's kind of a brawn tour. Like I want something a little cooler than that, but I do like to use it as a brawn tour. If that's a shade that you're interested in, this is Danessa Myrick's Nutcracker. And this is in her, uh, the Vision Flush. And it, she does a lot of these really cool like textures where she's like, I'm not gonna tell you where to use it on your face. You know, they're all long wearing and they're all gorgeous and they're all easy to work with. And so it's like, put it on your eyes, put it on your lips, put it on your cheeks. I don't care, you know? And I think that that's the, the beauty and the freedom that we get from the Danessa Myrick's line. But you can see, it's a little chocolatier, but I also built it up more. Not quite as cool toned, but I feel like it lends itself even better to the tour that I get from the Westman Atelier, and I almost prefer it, you know? It's just a lot more bang for my buck. A couple things from Milk Makeup that I do really think are worth it, and that is the, well, I don't have the blush around. I don't know where I stuck it, because it's the smallest one, and it's really easy to lose track of, but their whole Bionic line has really knocked my socks off. The finish on the skin mainly, because they look like products that have a really beautiful dewy finish, but they actually dry down quite a bit. And so the whole Bionic line does that. I'm not even that big of like a highlighter person, but I feel like if you're looking at something like the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wand, I would go for this maybe instead because it is a prettier finish on the skin and it gives a very similar effect. But I don't know, they're actually, they're, I mean, they're both beautiful. I'm not gonna lie to you. They're both absolutely beautiful, but I just think that this one is like more versatile. I mix it with things. I can use it as a primer if I want to, and it's just gorgeous. So that's in the shade, vir shade Virtual. And then the Bionic Bronzer, this was the one that I tried first, where I was like, I am so angry at how good this is. Who gave them the right to put something for $30? Like, yes, this is quite a lot of product. It is uh, 0.6 fluid ounces of like a gel bronzer. For the amount of product, sure, but it's in very, like I would say understated is a nice way to say it um packaging and I was like oh god I bought it because it was new and I just wanted to try stuff and review it for for y'all but like it has absolutely no right to be as pretty as it is it's so pretty on the skin and you can apply it with your fingers it's just effortless. It's so awesome, especially if you're someone who leans pretty hard on a sponge. This is something that really behaves when you apply it with a sponge. I feel like I don't reach for it as often on camera because I don't usually use a sponge on camera. I usually use brushes, but if you're a sponge person, definitely. And if you're a fingers person, definitely. Let's go ahead and round out the rest of these blushes that I have in here because you know, I love blush. I really do. And I could, I have, I, I can, I could, and I have many times made entire videos only about blush, but I have trimmed it down to the ones that truly give me, they give me the feels, right? And I'm going to start with one that's really underappreciated and it is the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur. I have this in Coral Cloud, but I want it in every shade. I feel like it's better than the MAC ones because it's got a little bit more stiffness to it. It's not quite so mucky. And so it still applies like a powder on like a loose brush. It doesn't kind of want to drag my makeup where I do feel like those those ones from MAC, the, uh, the Glow Plays, they're just a little bit too putty for me and the amount that I want to put on. And this just especially, and it's not all the time, but like like when I'm having like one of those summery faces of makeup where I have leaned on something like spiked ginger from Kaja and like gone for something a little bit more like apricot on my lips or something, that coral as a pop on the cheek is so off the charts gorgeous. And it's this wild kind of like silicone-y like hybrid finish that, you know, typical of Bare Minerals leaves you with the most smoothed, blurred, gorgeous skin, like skin finish. It has just the, the tiniest amount of the shift in the light, but not glitter and certainly not like reflection, but it's just, it's so beautiful. 
This comes with the caveat of these are three products, okay? And they might not all work for you and don't buy something just because I recommend one product in it, like one part of it. But this is the Kaja Butter Up Play Bento. Again, bought this with my own money right when I was starting out and I was like, huh. This bronzer is so excellent, especially for my skin tone, but they make multiple uh, skin tone variations for this and like, it's just such a, an underappreciated little sleeper hit for uh, for cream bronzer. And they were one of the first ones I feel like that was kind of even on my radar of combining a cream and powders in the same little set. And so you have this really pretty, honestly, just like nice nuanced, but still just a very wearable, like pinky rose powder blush. And then a very pretty wearable highlight that's not super like young and glittery or spacey or like, you know, it doesn't shift all over the place. And it's just, again, in this super concise little package. And I really, really appreciate it. This is just such a good little combo. I think that it's great. I don't even know if I need to describe this, but it's my favorite blush. And that is the Pat McGrath. I love what she says. She says, blush without caution. Fabulous flirtations and exquisite seductions may result with prolonged use. She is lovely is she not so yeah this is flirtatious and um yeah the embossing is gone i am going to probably hit pan on this pretty soon i would guess it's just it's just the best it's the best it's the best color it's the best formula and when she says blush without caution she's not saying like oh my darlings this will give you the greatest skin of your life the way that like the charlotte tilbury website does where it's just like nothing but like just hyperbolic positive affirmations and you're like yeah but do you really mean any of this this is blush without caution because it's very sheer you can go in with a big fat brush lay this down on your face i'm wearing it right now and it just kind of like airbrushes on there in these beautiful soft thin layers you, you're never gonna end up with a stamping situation. You're never gonna end up with like, a, you know, a big weird skippy blob. It's, it's never going to do that. It's just so smooth and so beautiful. I don't have the same feelings about the duos that she put out. They are wildly pigmented, but these aren't. They are just so easy to use. They're the most user-friendly and also like the most gratifying. Like when you put this on, you're like, I know how to do makeup. I'm very good at this. I know everything about my face. Like that's how these make you feel. They make you feel like you're a professional makeup artist because the formula just does so much of the work for you. And that is why I continue to talk about it. I think that that was everything on the blushes. I have this on my face. I was fully planning on talking about it, but I think I applied more blush right before I started filming and I didn't put it back in the box. And so I just was like, no, you're not done talking about blushes. <laughs> I'm even buying the coral version of this because I want to know what that one does in terms of like adjusting my blush colors, you know, but Dior, Rosy Glow. Uh, if you aren't kind of trying to just dupe it and, you know, buy another brand that makes a similar color, it's a really great time to get a discount on a $39 blush. That's ha it happens to be fantastic. I love it so much. I use it all the time. Like it's, mine is disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you've been in the market for it, I can't recommend it highly enough. I think it's awesome. So it has like the very, very tiniest amount of whatever that like pH ingredient is. And so I do feel like it looks a little different on each person in like a good way. It doesn't all turn like hot pink, but also I use it, you know, in lieu of highlighter. So it's like, I mean, it doesn't have a highlight quality. It just adds like a neon pop on the top of the cheeks that I feel like is a more light catching warmth that looks a little bit more believable in terms of just like a plumping illusion than a highlighter. So that's just why I recommend it. Okay, let's talk about more complexion products. We already talked about uh, Kosa's and we talked about the Rare Beauty. I have three more here. One is the Tower 28 Sunny Days. I haven't used the Say Slip Tint yet. I think they're sending it to me and then I'll give y'all you know a review of that, but I haven't used it, that's why it's not in here. But this is the Tower 28 Sunny Days. I have Melrose and I have the next lighter one and they're both really nice for me. They, it's a very lightweight, beautiful skin tint that does actually wear like a makeup. They say that it is a tinted sunscreen. It's like you could use it as just your sunscreen. I wouldn't just because I do need extra sun protection, but it's so, it's so beautiful. I think that it's really, really pretty. And it's like as basic skin tints go, it's not going to have anywhere near as much coverage as this, but it's still like a nice blurring level of coverage. And it's a little bit dewier. I would highly recommend this like over the Tula. And you know, it's kind of like if you wanted the Glossier skin tint, but you wanted about twice as much coverage as that. So going from like, you know, 2% to 4%. <laughs> 
<laughs> coverage. It's, it's pretty low coverage, but it's so beautiful. Also on the low coverage front, if I were to choose one for myself, it would always be the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer. This thing is bananas. It has a little bit of like a pearly quality to it that's going to reveal, you know, light revealer. It's gonna reflect light, but it's not glittery. You know what I mean? It's just pearly. And there's something so wonderful about it because it behaves like you put makeup on. So it's like everything else will behave in a more consistent way as you're applying it. It has a long wearing quality to it, which I don't get from something like the Rose Ink. This just doesn't wear very long on me. It's like too emollient. And it also has, even though it's low coverage, it still makes your skin look more perfected for less coverage because of this kind of like blurring light refracting pearlescence that it has. So I just wanna be honest about the fact that like not everybody's gonna be into pearly things, but it's not like the kind of pearly texture that's going to accentuate texture. All right, a couple that are more in the like satin matte natural skin finish kind of category. These are kind of sister products to me. This is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint, and this is the Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. It's just about coverage here. Like this one's a little soupier, and it's going to give you, a, you know, on my arbitrary scale of coverage, I would say it gives you like a three and a half, and this probably gives you like a five and a half. You know? This one behaves a little bit more like a watery skin tint. It might build a little bit. And this is going to be a more flawless finish. I love them both. I love sometimes having a more satin finish, a more natural finish on my skin. It photographs beautifully, looks amazing on camera, and it does make other things go on more smoothly because there's not the emollients that might catch your brush or something like that, and they're so beautiful. So Fenty and Iconic London, less coverage, more coverage, but I recommend either one. All right, so I have one mascara, and that is the Tower 28 one. Again, I recommend pretty much anything that my mom likes <laughs> and my mom being not you know super super into makeup loves this because it performs and it doesn't irritate her eyes so like the thrive she loves it but it makes her eyes water which is kind of not what you want when something is going to become soluble or come off in tubes when your eyes are very wet. And so my mom was ending up with her little tubes of mascara kind of shedding on her cheeks because it, the, the formula itself made her eyes water. There was just something in it. And so I recommended the Tower 28 for her because that is what it was formulated to do was to be extraordinarily safe, you know? They took every measure to make it safe for sensitive eyes, but also perform. Oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait till they come out with a brown. Like I, I would love that, but it has this really funky, I heard it described as like a banana shaped applicator and it actually like, if you punch it like that, it, it gives a little bit, which means that like the valley right here will lay on more product and then the peak right there will actually take more product off. And so it's like, you can build more product at the very base of your lashes and stab yourself in the eye if you're me, because that's definitely something that happens with me. But, um, but then you can use this to take it off of the tips and like kind of have more control separating it. This is great stuff. It's so good. I mean, it already won so many awards before it even came out. And for good reason, it actually really performs. It, it like wears a long time, it rinses really easily, and it's super, super safe for sensitive eyes. So I love it. For brow products, y'all, I can tell you what's in my cart. I'm buying more of these in medium brown. So right now I'm using medium chocolate brown. It's not my ideal shade. And so that's why I actually use something else today. I think I used the Make Beauty, the blade line today. But these are the Kosa's Brow Pop and Air Brow. And I also like the clear one. I have the clear one knocking around somewhere. You know, it was one of those things where I was like, yeah, they're good, they're fine. You know, if you're in the market, I, I wouldn't kick them out of bed kind of thing. But as soon as I ran out of them and started using other things, I was like, I really miss them. They're a lot more remarkable than I give, give them credit for because the, the mousse itself has a lot of hold and a lot of pigment without being soupy and everywhere. And it does come in 10 shades and a clear. And so it does look very realistic when you get the right shade. And then the pencil, first of all, I know that this is so silly, but have you ever put the wrong cap on the wrong end of your eyebrow pencil and just be like, Ugh. it's just like one more frustration in the morning. The cap is the same size on both sides. <laughs> There's something so like no duh about that, but it's like, why doesn't every brand do that, you know? <laughs> so it's like, if you switch them, it's fine. You're not gonna be like, you're wrong. But it is kind of this like triangular shaped pencil that's just enough because if it's teeny tiny, I honestly lose patience. I am not here necessarily for drawing in individual eyebrow hairs. I will get way too carried away and I will just like 
not even have the energy to do the second eyebrow. So I like that you can get it done a little more quickly with this, but you can get some precision because there is like a point on the end of it. So as you know, parts where like I do want to get a little bit more like of a, of a blurred, believable, precise individual hair look, you can do that, but it's more for people like me who are a little bit impatient putting their brows on. But it's not waxy, it's not creamy, it's not gonna like get everywhere. It's just a very, very good brow pencil. And that is why I will be repurchasing it with my own Monet. Couple more perfumes. I told you they were right around the bottom, so I like couldn't reach my hands down and grab them, but this is, this is, I bought these for myself and I can't stop using them together as a team. I just watched Kelly's recommendation video this morning and she was also talking, she has the full size of this, but those are the Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods Rollerball and it's just, uh, unlike Kelly, I am a vanilla girl. I have so many different scent profiles of vanilla in my collection and I can't do too, too woody and I can't do too, too candy sweet. And this is somehow just, it's just very complete. And there is a touch of rose in this. I personally love a rose vanilla, not overly rosy, but I like a little bit of rose in my vanilla. And that's what makes it go so well with Nest Turkish Rose, which is also just Oh my goodness, it gives me goosebumps when I smell it. I'm not very good at like describing the actual sense, but like I can tell you how they make me feel and this makes me feel rich. <laughs> and I, I use this thing all the time and look at it. It's like all, I mean, I roll it like with reckless abandon and it, it hardly looks used. That's crazy. And this one you, is the same way. Like you can kind of see it's about right there. But yeah, I'm constantly, and maybe it's because I apply them together. And so I don't use as much of each one, but like, oh my gosh, every time I wear these, I had a little on the cap. That wasn't me just like being an idiot. Like, it's closed. Um, I had like gotten some of the oil on the cap, but either way, these two together, absolutely gorgeous. These two apart, absolutely gorgeous. I, it's just, but it's such a good signature scent combo for me, for me to do like a vanilla rose that just, they mesh so beautifully together. Can I recommend highly enough? Fragrance is life. Oh, speaking of fragrance is life, <laughs> clearly <laughs> I have gotten over my initial misgivings about the replica by the fireplace candle where I was like, it's kind of a lot. It's giving, is it too much scent? Or is your house too small? And I gave it a, my house is too small out of 10, but like somehow I got used to it and it's, it, I'm quickly working my way through it. The only thing is I cannot find those matches anywhere. I wonder if they're just like a promotional thing that was sent to me just in PR or like maybe they haven't come out yet, but they're the most unbelievable matches. I mean, charge $40 for them. Don't do that. Please don't do that, but they probably would. Either way, like they're a luxury match, okay? And like they should be selling them, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Either way. I'm truly loving this and obviously it's very expensive. So, you know, discounts where you can. And all we have left are lip products. So I'll just go quickly through these. This has been something that I never imagined would like take such a firm hold in my routine. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss. And this is in crystal. And I did realize after I said, oh, this is clear, this is clear. It is actually pink. It's actually pink. And it's a really pretty pink. And it's this really, Lovely, extraordinarily sticky. I think they're extraordinarily sticky, uh, but just like a beautiful long wearing lip balm. That's very, like, it actually does give me night treatment vibes. And that's what I use it for. I use it for prepping and I use it for nighttime because it's just so effective. It's very occlusive. And it's one of those things that's like, it's, it's like literally waterproof. And so I have really, really enjoyed this. That's definitely been a, a surprise hit for me. Y'all saw this in my last video. These are a recent favorite, but these are the Love Swipe from Kaja. And what I love about these is that they are that liquid lip balm formula, but they're matte. And so you get that, you know, blotted appearance that you would get from like a Generation G or something like that. It's that like effortless French girl lip, but it's super, super comfortable to wear. And it goes on like that. You don't have to fuss with it to get it to be like blotted looking. It has this effortless medium finish to begin with. And as that dries, like that's very wet, but as it, it doesn't completely dry down, but it does go to this like matte mousse texture and it's super soft and nourishing and comfortable on the lips. It never kind of like dries out and goes crackly feeling. Again, I just, Kaja, I admit I slept on Kaja for far too long. I judged these little packages, but this thing is 
so beautiful and they come in just great shades okay so this right here is uh i'm melting which is the mauve one that i like so much and then this right here is call me just the most gorgeous blotted berry color they smell kind of nice too just like very softly fruity but like look at that oh. and i can't even tell you how just like lovely and slippy they feel but not in a way that's going to run away from you they're just lighter than air on the lips. They're cool. They're really, really cool. I recently picked this up. They sent me one and I got excited about the formula, but when I went online, I saw a shade I was even more excited about. So I bought it for myself and these are not expensive at all. These are the heart melters from Kaja and it's like a punch up thing. And this is in the shade Let's Chill. And you'll see quickly why I like this so much. And that is because it's like this really great lilac. You know what I mean? Like it's not even that mucky. It's just like a pure lilac. So something that I want to just like make an entire look around and it's almost like a more wearable version of the tones that are in the you know $60 Tom Ford lip gloss that's in that like fluorescent Dior pink and it's it gives that you know but in a much more wearable way and the formula is so comfortable it's so nourishing it's so creamy and it goes on really easily because it's in this even though it's a heart it's just teeny tiny teeny tiny thing and it goes on really evenly it's just a very very good formula again in wonderful shades so i adore that i love it kaja is really like the star of the show today i don't know if i really meant to do that but this is the gloss shot in milk tea and it's just one of those really good milky gloss shades and it's super super nourishing but i think i like it because it's almost clear but it still gives that kind of like white out look on my lips not like white out but like you know what i mean like it kind of is lighter than my skin tone and so it m makes my lips like a beautiful texture but it takes them out of the running for like, the most distracting thing on my face kind of thing which is something that i like to do i do have lip filler and so they're already big i don't need to then you know like line the crap out of them and, <laughs> and make them like the you know overwhelming star of the show i'm usually trying to work on my small eyes and so something like this with a lip liner is just that effortless she sexy lip that's not overwhelming to the look. It just looks really just like pretty and understated. And then that's actually the same for these, except this one's plumping and this one's not. So this is actually the main thing I think that gave me that like white ring on my lips. And I don't know why, but I can always make just a universal set of excuses for this formula. And I own it in several colors because I just like the way that it looks so much. Okay. There's something nostalgic about it. And it's the Pat McGrath Lust Gloss. Like, yeah, if I talk for an hour with this on my mouth, it's gonna give me the white ring of death. And like that really is gross and I wish it didn't do that. But at the same time, I love this and I wear it constantly because it's so beautiful. It's just a straightforward lip gloss, but it's just so pretty and it's luxurious and the colors are awesome. I have tons of these, like I said, and they tend to go on sale a lot. So like, you don't necessarily have to pick it up at this sale, but like, oh my God, Pale Fire Nectar is like this multi-chrome one. I have Divine Rose. This is Love Potion. I have Dare to Bear also. Uh, I have a bunch of them and I just love how sexy they look. Like, are they the most high-tech formula ever? No, but they're super sexy. And this, you know what? I came back around to this and I really dig it, especially as lip plumpers go. So I haven't had my lips filled in, uh, I think January, this January will be two years. It, I am one of those people who is very fortunate and my body just does not metabolize the filler very quickly. It does not metabolize the hyaluronic acid very quickly and my lips just stay plump. It's kind of awesome. So uh, I did it the January after my kid was born and he just turned two. And so I'll probably get them done again, like in January of next year or something. But this stuff's only supposed to last about 18 months and it lasts a good two years for me. But as it's been wearing off a little bit, I like something that plumps just ever so slightly because it'll help to sort of smooth out these little, you know, creases in my lips and stuff when I'm wearing it. And the Patrick Ta one does that. So this is the major, what is this thing called? Major volume plumping gloss. And I have it in the shade superficial and it's a beautiful color. It's this really pretty neutral tan beige. It's like a little bit rosy maybe. And it is plumping and it's got a tiny, tiny bit of like a glitter to it, but <laughs> it smells like walking into Michael's at Christmas time, you know, where you have those like on either side of the door, it's just flanked with those gigantic bins of cinnamon scented pine cones. It's so specific. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's what it smells like and I love wearing it. I love it. It looks like, I, it's one of those ones that wears long enough that like I forget I'm wearing it and then I catch myself in the mirror later and I'm like, dang girl, your lips look good, you know? And, uh, and that's why I love it. I also like the package. There's something about kind of like shrinking this down and making it chunkier that like is just very, I don't know, it's very luxurious feeling. I love this package, so anyway. Wow, y'all, wow. Wow, I can't believe I made it through all of that. And that doesn't mean that like, I'm, I know I'm forgetting things. I know I'm forgetting things, okay? But those are the recommendations. Like I said, I'm going to have a one-stop page where you can shop all of these recommendations without, without having to like keep poking around in this video. But also I have a playlist of all of my Sephora sale recommendations videos. So I will stick those right here. I hope y'all have a lovely sale. Leave me a comment below and tell me what y'all are picking up at the sale or what you've already picked up at the sale. I hope you do enjoy the sale. Don't feel pressured to buy and I love y'all and I will see you in the next one.